We view the world in three dimensions, but we spend a good portion of our day using computer monitors, TVs, and mobiles that display only two. But thanks to changes in display technology, some of that is about to change. Three-dimensional viewing has been around for almost 200 years, long captivating our imaginations. Discovered by English scientist Charles Wheatstone, the first usable instance of 3D appeared in 1844, around the time when photography was invented. The stereoscope was a device that could take photographic pictures in 3D by simply taking two photos focused on an object with slightly different viewpoints, similar to how our separate eyes see the world. And this is the same principle that introduced me to 3D when I was a kid, the Viewmaster. The Viewmaster was a novelty toy which used a stereoscopic technique to make the images appear to pop out from their backgrounds. But while images on paper discs was fun as a child, people needed more. During the 1950s, 3D movies became all the rage, but the technology was still a kludge. Two projectors had to run side by side, often falling out of sync. Audience members complained of eye fatigue and distorted color. Even so, many of the biggest westerns and horror movies of the era were projected in 3D. Alfred Hitchcock even made a movie, Dial M for Murder, in 3D back in 1954. Early 3D was hard to watch, but eventually the scientists and engineers would get the math right. And while technology has become more accurate, the principle remains the same, creating an optical illusion of depth. And to better understand how you can watch 3D, you have to know the main methods of viewing. There's anaglyphic with passive red cyan glasses, polarization with passive polarized glasses, alternate frame sequencing with active shutter glasses or headgear, and auto stereoscopic displays without glasses or headgear. Due to binocular disparity or your eyes being set a certain distance apart, these glasses are needed to put the dispersed images together again so your brain can see them as three-dimensional. It's actually pretty tough to get 3D right, as there are many factors that you have to take into account before trying to capture and project 3D. The first rule, you have to know how the images will be viewed. You're basically creating a virtual space in front of the viewer, and you must know what that space is before you can start placing shapes and objects at different distances because of the optical limitations. This is where 3D gets tricky and where new technology is trying to improve the viewing experience. One of the newer technologies being picked up by movie theaters and home entertainment manufacturers is DLP or Digital Light Processing. DLP is a proprietary technology owned and developed by Texas Instruments. It uses tiny, tiny mirrors laid out in a matrix reflecting light that is then transferred to a chip with each mirror representing a pixel in the projected image. Those chips correspond to the resolution of the image and you can increase or decrease the quality of the image by how many mirrors you have and can project, thus minimizing the space between pixels and allowing for a more crisp image that is 100% digital. Using this projection technology, 3D has been able to make quite a comeback in the past year seen in the release of media and devices specifically designed for 3D viewing. Dedicated sports and news channels in 3D, specialized televisions for projecting 3D, live streaming of events such as fashion shows, and, of course, the biggest movie of the year, Avatar. Also, advancements in computer chips and software such as True3D has pushed the technology even further. But watching this media at home requires you to purchase a 3D specific television and a few companies are starting to produce these products such as the Sony 3D HD TVs marketed under its Bravia LX and HX series lines. You do have to wear special alternate frame sequencing shutter glasses that the system tells when to flicker the shutter giving a crisp clear picture or Panasonic's 3D Vera HD TVs, which is probably the most impressive system, as you don't see a slight flickering as you might on other 3D TVs because of its 0.001 millisecond response speed compared with the 4 millisecond LCD of the Bravia. It's neat to think that we're starting to embrace the 3D revolution, but what are some of the downsides? Well, the comfort still isn't there yet. Like many moviegoers from the 50s, I personally get headaches because I can still detect a slight flickering. And these systems are built for people with two healthy eyes. If you have any eye issues or can only see out of one eye, then you're not going to get the 3D effect. It's also an expensive proposition with tickets at the theaters costing around $16 and home systems priced over $2,000 for a high quality experience. And then there are the funny looking glasses that can be easily lost or misplaced. 
This technology has been around for almost 200 years, and the recent advances in displays and contents are breathtaking. But does this mean that 3D has finally hit its stride? Or will we have to clear space to store these things next to our old Viewmasters? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks, and I'm Ellie Rountree, and this has been another episode of Rockaboom Tech.